Howdy everybody, this is Steve up here behind the camera, KM9G, and we're going to talk about Nano VNA today. This is the original Nano VNA, well maybe not the original original, but this is the Nano VNA H. And this is an official version that I got from RNL Electronics, there will be a link in the description down below. It's pretty easy to get some of these that are fakes. What I am going to do in this video though, is I'm going to compare this with another version of the Nano VNA that was sent to me by Don Digidio, and we're gonna see what this is all about. Apparently, Don has himself a 3D printer, so there might be some 3D printing magic in Don's future that he'll share with all of us too, who knows? Let me get this thing here open. Oh my goodness, it's thicker. Don hasn't even opened this thing up. He's actually uh, sending this to me straight away, so I can take a look at it and share it with all of you. This is the Light VNA 64. We will take extra good care of this and send it back. So it comes with a little instructione pamphlet that is written in not a language I can understand. So there is that. But let's flip it over. Hey, look at that. That's a little bit better. The Light VNA Menu Structure Map. Excellent. What do we have here? This is the way that you would walk through all of the menus and... These devices are a little overwhelming, I will fully admit, but that's because they do a lot of things. And when you do a lot of things, you got to have a lot of menu options. So I kind of get it. It's laid out very well uh, in terms of these things are in the flow of where you'd expect them to be as you're doing your work. So let's get this closed up and put off to the side. And then flip this box over. So Light VNA 64 Portable Vector Network Analyzer versus... Nano VNA, very tiny handheld vector network analyzer. So this one is not portable. This one is portable. I'm, I'm kidding. I don't know. It's just the words on the page. Let's open up the box. Oh my, it's much bigger. That's already going to be a big bonus. So, okay. So let's compare these side by side. So now you can already see the difference. The screen on the light VNA is the size of the entire nano VNA that I have, the nano VNA H. So that's already a bonus. It's going to be a lot easier to see. We still have SMA connectors on the side. Let's remove the covers there. This is plus, DBM, plus 10 dBm RF max, 10 volt DC max. And this one just says good luck. There's no warning on it for what size it is. Now let's keep on moving. Flip these two over, look at the back side of them. Light VNA 64 on top, Nano VNA H on the bottom. Uh, frequency 50 kilohertz to 6.3 gigahertz. Holy moly. Frequency 50 kilohertz to 300 megahertz, 300 megahertz to 900 megahertz. 0.9 G to 1.5 G. I don't know why they wrote it that way, but it's 50 to 1.5 gigahertz. Power 5 volt USB. This one takes 1 amp. This one takes half an amp. Hardware version 3.5, hardware version 64-0.3, and then the serial numbers there, and there is a lightvna.org uh, QR code there, and there's a nanovna.com QR code there. Okay, what else do we get in the box? All right, so we have a USB A to USB C cable, and they're purple. I don't know why they're purple, but I like them. I think that's pretty neat. We have some better test leads, much higher quality test leads. So you can see that right off the bat. NanoVNA.com SS405. You can feel that this has got a much uh, more rigid shell on the outside than this. They are a little bit longer. So higher quality cables, longer cables. And then you have your stylus device. I use this quite a bit because I don't like getting fingerprints on my screen. And then you have your standards, so the typical short open load, and then the union connector for when you do through testing, so that you can calibrate out the magic of these wires. And if we can see the screen. Okay, no battery charge. Plugs on the bottom of this one. All right, so we've got it plugged in, and we have a little red light shining through the top here. Is that going to give us some juice to turn it on? That is going to give us some juice to turn it on. It doesn't look too terribly bad on camera. Okay, so I'm going to pull out my load standards. 
and we'll check out what a calibration looks like. Because that's something that people do all the time with these things here. So let's do calibrate, and we want to calibrate, and we want to calibrate the open. So there's nothing on, which is the same as doing an open. That has finished. That seems to take about the same amount of time. We're going to use the short. This is connecting the center conductor to the outside, and that's a short. Well, that's pretty cool. Let's do short. And on the Nano VNA H, there's a little blue line that shrinks across the top here that I'm not seeing when I'm doing this testing. And that's a little bit of a progress indicator on the version that I have. So we pull off the short, and as we get this thing touched, it sort of makes these little spirals around on the Smith chart. That's pretty cool. We'll put the load on, we'll do a load test. And again, no indicator that I actually did the thing until it's done. I'm not going to do a through test, that's fun. And then there's done, and there's done in RAM. Done in RAM is new, let's try done in RAM. So it's automatically applied and it doesn't really give you the ability to save it as you're going through the process. Let's go back. Let's do calibrate again. I'll speed it up this time. And we'll just do done this time. Okay, so done gives us the options to save. I'm going to save that as option zero. It's now been calibrated. So you can recall option zero and the device has been calibrated as you recall those things. All right, so those are put back. Let's see. What else can we do? All right, so we've got all the typical stuff. The major difference here is the bigger screen and the wider range up to 6.3 gigahertz. I don't have anything to test it up to 6.3 gigahertz. Uh, let me get an antenna plugged into it and we'll play with that a little bit. Okay, so what I have here is the coax that's connected up to my DX Commander and then I put it on this little bit of short wire here so it doesn't yank it off of the table. I'm gonna change the display around a little bit. Look at that thing, just all over the place. All right, so let's change this back let's do display trace and I'm going to turn off the other traces to clean it up a bit and I want to do trace one and trace zero so let's go back here trace zero format is going to be SWR and let's go back and back and display trace one, and I'm going to switch that over to Smith. Okay, so now I've got an SWR chart and a Smith chart, and we're running 10 megahertz to 3 gigahertz, and that's, that's just way too much information. So let's go back and switch that over to Stimulus, Start. I'm going to start at 7 megahertz. So now we're starting at 7 megahertz, and I'm going to stop at... 8 megahertz. And we have a little bit better there. Now let's see what we can do about the... Okay, so let's find where our marker is for our lowest SWR. All right, SWR is 1.03 at 7195 megahertz. And it's moving a little bit as the wind is blowing outside. That's not to be unexpected. Uh, let's see. Smith chart is saying 49 ohms 49.9 50 ohms okay and that's why it's showing up right there and very little uh, deflection on the Smith chart so that's actually pretty good let's try this on a center of 14.074 the FT8 frequency on 20 meters 7 megahertz stop 14.07 sorry 7 megahertz start 14.074 stop let's do that again 7 14.074 megahertz Span is 7 megahertz. Let's change the span to be 1 megahertz. There we go. And we're still doing really good on reactants on the Smith chart. Let's move this down and see where our SWR marker is. There it is. I had to find it. It was still down at the 7 megahertz range. So I had to bring it up to here. All right, and our SWR is 1.02, 1 1.025 to 1 at 
13.919 and at 14.074, let's see if I can get there, 14.074, we're at 1.6. So my internal tuner inside of my radio will take care of that. So not too bad, and I could also shorten the antenna element wire to take care of that as well, but uh, I'm running a different experiment on my DX Commander. I want to see how long it will last. We're, we're past three winters at this point, and still no problems with the DX Commander. So it is fantastic. So I don't want to make any changes until there's an actual failure, and we'll document that in a future video. So what do I think about this? I think this is fantastic. I love the fact that it has a much larger screen. It does say portable, so I would have wanted a portable case i understand for the price point that there isn't a portable case and maybe you already have some way of of porting this thing around but overall i am very impressed with this and if i was going to get one of these right out of the gate it would be this one here the light vna first instead of this one here just because of that screen size i can use this but i can't really show it to to you guys on camera as well as i can on this and i'm not removing this because it's not mine i want to give this back to Mr. Don, so that he can remove that at his own pleasure or not as he sees fit. So there will be a link in the description down below where you can get one of these or where you can get one of these. I don't receive any commission off of those from RNL Electronics. RNL Rogers is a fantastic guy and I do like to send business his way and I know that I can trust these from RNL because it is possible to get some fakes of these things and they don't work so well. I've got a video on uh, fake VNA testing that you can see right over here next. And if you wanna see if yours stacks up. There's a good testing procedure in there. Thank you for being awesome. We will see you in the next one.